are now streaming live on Facebook. So yay, we're live. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hold on, let me just make sure. Okay, yes, I see that we are streaming. Perfect. All right. I'm going to X out of that so it doesn't make noise. And ta-da! I'm here with the lovely Jessica Rasdale. Is it Rasdale or Rasdale? Rasdale. I always say Rasdale. So does everybody. And Rascal and Rasdale. Like all, all the things. We're here with Jessica Rascal. Um, <laughs> and I'm just so excited because she is our second guest now. And Jess is somebody who I've known for like, what, two or three years now? Three years now? Hot um, minute. Which is kind of crazy. Wow. Um, we're getting old. But I'm pumped because she is, I'll explain my own words and then I'll let you do your thing. But really, I see Jess as the go to person for all things speaking and really turning your mess into a message. She um, is just such an incredible leader inside of this industry. And I just so love everything that you do, how real you are. And I'm just excited to have you here to dive into your business a little bit more and just kind of see what's going on behind the scenes with you. But you take it away. Tell us what you do. Oh, I so appreciate you. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love this because I feel like I've known you forever now in this little space, but mm -hmm. I'm so thankful. So um, yeah, my name is Jessica Raz Dole. Right. And I know it's confusing with, I mean, I'm the purple haired chick. And nails. <laughs> Yes, so edgy. <laughs> You're so edgy. I'm so edgy. That's like a running joke too that I'm edgy. <laughs> um, I partner with female business owners to craft um, presentation, speaking presentations that connect with their dream clients, that help them stand out from the crowd, and. I really aim to make sure you're, you are using a speaking strategy that's profitable for your business, that you're not just trying to take on something new and add more to your plate and just be scattered and spending all this money and traveling all over, but instead you're using speaking as a way to extend your business and get a bigger reach and make a bigger impact. I love it. So amazing. So before we like dive into my million questions that I want to ask you, I would love to just hear a little bit, not too much, because I hate when things go into like background stories for days, but I'd love to just hear like why you got started um, in this industry to begin with and what like your big dream was when you first heard about the coaching world um, and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, so we can go into like the deep stuff later, but yeah. we'll just back up a little and starting the business. Yeah. And I, I went a little backwards. We'll go to get into why later, but most people, you know, are logical and they do things where they work with like a one-on-one -on -one client and then maybe they do group stuff and then they decide they want to speak and reach the masses. Well, I'm not like that. And I started on the speaking side and then spoke for 10 years. And then people were asking to work with me one-on-one. -on -one, and my response was kind of like, well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, do you like give me a check? How does this work? I, I don't really get it. And I remember reaching out to a mentor and was kind of explaining to her, you know, I want to help people. I want to help women with their stories and I want to help them take these difficult stories and make them cohesive, but I don't want to be a therapist and I don't want to solve people's problems. I just want to help along the way. She's like, okay, well, you want to be a coach? I can do that. Okay. So I go through like the whole coach certification and you know, they kind of put you in this box. I'm like, okay, you're going to have this six month core program. You'll have these like 12 month programs. And, um, no, nah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not like rules very much. And I, you know, I started trying to do that, but like, I was so eager to want to help people with their stuff my messaging might not have been very good. And I was definitely attracting a lot of people who thought I could save them mm. and this victim mentality. And that for me is like a, no, that's, a, that's a hard no. <laughs> that's a hard no. <laughs> and, um, so I digging a little bit deeper, I was really understanding, okay, I don't want to work with the person who thinks they've necessarily been through a lot and they want somebody to fix it for them. I want to go through the woman who's like on the other side and knows there's this little thing holding her back. Mm. Like I want the survivor. I want the overcomer. Like I want that warrior. <laughs> and so I started working with female entrepreneurs to take that story to the next level. But this piece that was my sweet spot 
the thing that I knew the most about that I had spent the most time in the speaking, I wasn't really taking ownership of because I just assumed these women are successful business owners. They must know what they're doing when it comes to speaking. But the reality was it's kind of blind leading the blind. And I didn't realize how much I brought to the table. Mm, I love that. Cause I also feel like so often we have these gifts or these areas of like immense talent where we're like, eh, whatever, no big deal. Like, why is everybody like making such a big deal about it? And we don't realize it. We're blind to it because we're surrounded by it all the time. But um, yeah, like I've been a coach in the industry for a while now and I have no fucking clue what to do when it comes to public speaking. Hence why I signed up for your course recently because I know I want to take this stage and really reach the masses, but I'm not going to just go at it on my own. I'm going to, you know, go with somebody who knows what they're doing. So it's been amazing so far. So I just love that you're totally owning this space now and rocking it out. It's amazing to see you doing it. Oh, thank you. And I love that you're doing that though, because so many times we're just like, we just say yes to all the things like, well, she's doing it. I can do it too. Let's go. Yeah. And it's not good for anybody. <laughs> what we have to remember is when we're speaking to an audience, like that's the entry point of a funnel. That's the first time we're meeting these people. It's the first time they're having contact with us. And like, what kind of impression do we want to make? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Love it. So let's dive a little bit deeper here. I know that, um, a big part of, well, there's a big part of your story that you're leaving out right now. And I know that you talk about it all the time, but I think for those people who don't know you, it's important to mention um, and talk about because you literally have taken this mess of yours and turned it into a message. And before we went live, you were saying like, this is something that you really didn't want to come public with that you were like, well, I'm not going to put words into your mouth. Why don't you share a little bit about like how you had this truth and you were afraid to expose this, you know, shade of it because it's pretty dark. Um, steal it away. Yeah. <laughs> so we, it, that's exactly what we were talking about. So, you know, I had already mentioned that I started working with women on their stories, but like, there's a reason for that. Yeah. I, when I was a freshman in college, you know, I was on the traditional path. I was a scholarship student. I was at the university and I was going for business stuff. I always had that itch for business and like, that's just what you do, right? You major in business. <laughs> that's just the path. That's of, course, there. of course. And I threw it all away. One Friday night, I was out with my best friend who I had known since I was five years old. And we ended up drinking. I drove us home. And five minutes from her dorm room, less than a mile from home, something happened. And I crashed the car. Laura was killed on impact. And I nearly lost my life you know, you go through something like that and there's nothing you can do to fix it. And at that point, like all I wanted to do was to make this go away, to bring her back, to make sure it never happened again. And I couldn't, the only thing I could do was prevent somebody else from repeating this. And I like, I refuse to let her become another underage drinking statistic. Mm. So I started speaking about it. I wanted to reach as many young impressionable adults who thought they were invincible as possible and just say, Hey, like, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but this is me. I look just like you. And I thought it would never happen to me. And in two years while my case was open and I was pending a possible prison sentence of 10 and a half to 15 years in prison for DUI manslaughter, I spoke to over 15,000 teenagers and it drew a lot of attention. And, you know, it was all over the media, ABC 2020 and Katie Couric. It's been on MTV, just all over the world. So it's never been something that I hid from. I was always very public about it because as much pain as it caused me to talk about it and to be that girl, it wasn't about me. You know, I was there to serve a bigger purpose and I was there to make a difference and I was there to prevent it from happening again and to keep her memory alive. But when it came time to step into this business world, I looked at that as such a liability. You're like, who am I to help somebody in their business when I, for four years, was called, you know, inmate number 154809? Who am I? How is anybody going to trust me? How is anybody going to let me um, hold their stories for them? And I didn't want to talk about it. Like, I didn't, I mean, all they had to do was Google. I mean, it was never something that was going to go away, but I didn't want to bring it into my business. But 
here was the kicker. Did I really want to work with someone who didn't know? And then we got into this deep coaching relationship and it came out. And what if they had a personal connection to a similar story? Like, no way. I wouldn't even know how to process that. Like sharing that piece, being completely authentic about it. I never have to worry now about like, once I get in with somebody, they know everything. Mm. You know, there's no secrets. There's no skeletons. Like, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. It's not for everybody. That's okay. But if you're cool with this, like, we're going to get along great now because I've already let it all out. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, it's such a, unfortunately this kind of thing happens every day. So most of us know somebody who has been through this on one side or the other. And I never wanted that to be something that came up in, in work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I think, I mean, I just think the world of you and what you've been able to do with something that is so tragic and could have just, I mean, you just took it in a completely different direction and I just have so much respect and like love for and admiration for what you do. And um, it's just so powerful to show people how you truly can take these unfortunate circumstances that have happened and, you know, saying make the best of it sounds so like, I don't know, not, that's not the right word, but um, just do something so positive and impactful with it and to inspire other people that they can do the same. And no matter what their message is, right? Because I know you have a lot of people too who will come to you being like, oh my God, your story is crazy. Like, I don't have something like that. But everybody does have a story. Everybody does have a message. And I love how you uh, make it really clear that no story is more important than anyone else's. And so I'd love to hear a little bit more about that too for people who are like watching right now and they're like, oh shit, like how am I supposed to speak on stage when I don't have a truth to tell that's like something like that. Um, if you could speak a little bit about that and what you would advise people who are interested in really um, taking their message to the next level, what would you suggest that they do? I love that point because like, you know, in our, whether you're speaking on the stage or you're just trying to stick out online, it can be really tempting for people to try to pull emotional crap out just to stick out. Please don't be that person. <laughs> There is nothing cute about having a sob story. Yeah. In fact, like you want something that is incredibly relatable. You want the story that everybody gets. So we need to kind of, we need the story. The story is what carries the themes, but you need to look a little bit deeper and like, what are the themes in the story? So for me, the thing that people connect with, it's not the actual story. Most people have never been in my shoes. Mm -hmm. What they connect with is the fact that I took ownership up of it. You know, that I kept going. It's, it's that like, I like to work with people who get knocked down here and there and are just get back up and are kind of like, what, bring it. You know, that's my kind of person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <And> yep. <laughs> so that's the theme that I, I'm focused on there like in, in our space. So when you're looking at your story, whether you're just aiming to shorten someone's learning curve and you know, you're working on something very technical in their business or you're showing them how to market online, whatever the case may be, what are the themes? What does your person identify with? It doesn't have to be the same story, but the, you need to pull those same emotions. Mm, I love that. Amazing. And so as you've gone and you're, you've created your business, have there been any like, rules that you've been told, like you have to do this in order to be successful? And did you follow that? And how did that go? Let's start there. I don't like rules. I know. <laughs> were you ever told any rules that you were like, shit, I should probably listen if I want to be successful and you did follow it. And then like, what happened? Or did you just say, no, I'm never listening to rules. I have purple hair. I know. <laughs> you know, like there's, um, there's a lot. I think there's this especially so I'm a mom I have a small human mm -hmm. and I think there's this intention in this constant feeling of like the word hustle and working around the clock you know I work two days a week I work two days a week and run a full-time business <laughs> because like I have to carve it out in the way that fits and I know a lot of people um there's like there's two sides of the spectrum you're either like all mom and like that comes first or you're like all business and work around the clock and I don't fit in either one of those categories because like I make sure we have childcare on those days. So I got stuff I want to get done. Like that's a priority to me, but also I'm not going to run myself into the ground because family, that's probably been the biggest thing where I'm like, I don't feel like I fit in either of those categories. Mm. And it feels good. I don't care. <laughs> and then, Long hair don't care. No, no. 
Um, but on top of that, I'd say my biggest thing is probably the structuring of the way I offer services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, coming from that coach certification, it was very much like, okay, you're going to have like a six month and a 12 month package and you're going to meet once a week for an hour. And I know like a month in, I'm like, I don't want to talk anymore. You know, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> so we actually do a lot of workshop style stuff. Like I want to get in, I want to get it done. I want you to have the tools to go mm -hmm. apply it. I'd rather do intensive work and like write it out for like two hours and get you everything you need. And, um, I, I like, I prefer that. I just, I'd rather sprint. I'm not a marathon runner. Yeah. No. So talk more about this because I think people are so fascinated by the various business models out there and like, yes, coaching totally like has like that classic one. So I'd love to hear more about certain offerings you have and how you work with clients and just like what it looks like inside of your business. That's great. So I have a few different, a few different ways. So we, we've Lexi's in the blueprint. So we have the blueprint and it's like a group um, it's a course, but it's a mentorship. So it, I'm definitely all up in their business. <laughs> and Which is so amazing. Right. I wasn't expecting that level of support. Like I know that you're totally like in there telling, giving feedback all the time and super available. And so it's really hands on and amazing. So I, I love that. I love that. Well, I feel like speaking is something where, I, you know, when I first got started with speaking, I had a mentor. And that was so powerful for me. Like you, I can't say enough about finding a mentor paid, unpaid. It does not matter. You need to have somebody who's where you want to be. So it's like your thing to focus on, to know what's possible because we don't always see what's possible for ourselves. So the blueprint is really like a mentorship where they're under my wings, everything you need to know about speaking. Like it's all laid out. It's obnoxious. It's probably more information than you want or need. And then made to guide you through it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but on top of that, I have a few other things. So I do what I call presentation prep sessions. And this is where I literally write your talk for you. So we get on a call for like two hours and you don't do anything. You just show up mm -hmm. and I ask you a bunch of questions and I literally write your outline while we're on the call together. And it's crazy because most of the time people show up to the call with this idea of, I'm going to, I want to speak on this because either it's what everybody else is doing or it's what they've been told they should speak on. And then as we start getting with ready with the prep work of what feels good and what makes sense for your business and how can you best serve your audience, it's usually a completely different topic. But at the end of our call, I literally hand deliver like your entire outline for your presentation. So you can just focus on making that yours, but you don't have to worry about the structure. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to worry about what goes where and how I'm supposed to say that. Or, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. Again, mm -hmm. it's only like two hours. We get it done. <laughs> and, Love it. And how many people do you usually take on to do that like each month? So presentation prep sessions are very specific. They're usually for the person who has a talk coming up. Mm -hmm. Like I try, I don't want more than one a week because they're actually like incredibly exhausting energy wise. Yeah, you're writing somebody else's talk. Like you have yeah. to all up in their shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, all up in that space. Yeah. Uh huh. And a lot of like prep work before to understand like what does their business look like? Who are the people attending this event? Like how do we need to sh position you to be enough of an authority from the stage, but not too much where you can't convert right? Mm -hmm. Like there's that sweet spot. Um, but so the, so if we're breaking it down to like how this makes business run successfully, the blueprint, it's got like 10 women, I think maybe more. I, I should probably know that, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it has enough women to, for three months. That's the nice core of the things. And then we're doing monthly small workshops. They're just an hour long. They range depending on how intense they are from like a hundred bucks to 250 bucks and it's show up. It's like a paid webinar. You know, there's no pitch. You come ready to do the work and we're going to get it done. And those have been pretty awesome, awesome because then when they're done, now you didn't have to waste the time creating a mini course. You got paid to create the mini course. Question, do you then take those, like the replays and sell those? Yes. Nice. So, but, you know, I think that's the biggest hurdle 
I tend to see with clients is this feeling like I have to wait till everything's perfect. I'm going to spend six months creating this thing and then I'll put it out into the world. But if you get to actually do it with clients, you find your blind spots, right? Like I'm a big, I've never put anything out that I didn't beta test. I beta test every single offering we do because I feel like I have so many blind spots. Mm -hmm. I've been doing the speaking thing for so long, everything seems simple and something that may be really, really valuable to you. I won't realize that. So by beta testing it, I get paid to, you know, test out my content. Um, but it also like forces me to get it done faster. Mm, yeah. I love that. And so are those all your offerings right now? And then I do intensives. So mm -hmm. basically you can work with me if you want to do um, a speaker mentorship, you can do it with me one-on-one -on -one for three months. Mm -hmm. But in reality, most people don't want to drag it out. They're like, I'd rather do a full day or two days intensive work. And we just spend like six hours, you know, building out your speaking strategy, figuring out what topics you should be speaking on. Where should you be speaking? How do you pitch these? How do we structure these talks? Like, how do we create your marketing material so you can actually be this authority figure in your, in your industry? And, um, I just, I think my ladies are trailblazers. They don't want to stretch it out in <laughs> over three months. They just want to get it done. I could agree with that. And so with these people, do you find that you are working with people one off most of the time or do they come back when they have their next talk? Like how does that work for you? I love that question. We were just talking about this the other day that, and I was thinking about it today when we were, we were on our, our masterclass, I was looking through the call and Megan, we had a, a masterclass today on speaker sales funnels and my guy, Megan Maydell, the other purple haired gal, that girl, um, <laughs> that girl, she was, when she was talking about sales funnels, it, 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 how much easier it is to sell some, but to someone who is already purchased from you. And I'm literally looking through the blueprint lineup, like you've given me money, you've given me money. You've, almost all of my clients come back. I have some that have worked with me like four times awesome. through different offerings. And I love that. When I already know them, it makes the work way easier, but it's, it's just so rewarding to see that somebody has invested in you. It's worked for them very well and they've come back and invested again. Like nothing makes me happier. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. And so what are your prices? Like, so for the offerings that you have, like what's like the range that you're working with here? We have a huge range. <laughs> you like, it's very different. So the person who is taking the workshop is probably somebody who's dipping their toe into speaking. Yeah. And I'm just going to ask, and what is the person like associated with it? Where are they in their business? All that stuff. I love that. So the yeah workshops are usually somebody who's like, I'm thinking about, I've probably been attending some events. I'd like to do that. I'm not quite like all in yet. That's them. Mm -hmm. um, the blueprint, the group, um, that one's at like, I think it's nine ninety seven. It's right around a thousand dollars. And that's more of the person who has maybe done a talk or two, but hasn't been compensated for it or who is really, really interested in speaking. But again, they're not like, I need to make this happen right now. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in this, they're really learning and growing. Now the, to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's 3,500. And that's the person who's like, no, like I want to add a stream of revenue to my business. I want this to work. I already have a successful business and I don't have time to waste on the speaking. Yeah. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I love that. That's my favorite work. And then presentation preps are kind of in the middle there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same price point as the blueprint, but it's only two hours. So again, that's nine ninety seven mm -hmm. for the two hours of us to write your talk together. That's for the woman who is like, I just got booked. I don't know how I landed this. SOS help. <laughs> SOS. Now I need to blow it out of the water and I need to make sure I get rebooked. I need to convert. Like, please help me. That's my presentation prep gal. <laughs> cool. I love it. That's amazing. And so how long do you think it took you to create these offerings that feel like super aligned for you inside of your business? What was the process? Did you try certain things that were total flops or failures? And what were those like for you? So this is the best. So last yeah. year, well, this is, this is fun. Um, just do what they ask. That's all. Just do what they ask. And then last year I, we were doing all story stuff, like all story work and everything was going well. It just didn't feel so good. 
right? Like it was working, things were working, there were clients, like there was no problem there, just I, we were in, it was December and we were in the middle of, no, I lie, it was like November, but we had, we were in the middle of launching a group program, the Own It Academy around your story. Oh yeah, I remember that, okay. Huge launch, huge launch, like 11 guest experts, tons of affiliates, like huge launch. And I get on a team meeting, <laughs> I, said, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> what did Megan say to that? Nina's so calm. She's like, so, and her voice cracks. And she's like, so, are we like still doing the launch? Or? <laughs> no, I don't know. We're going to go through with this, but like, I don't ever want to do it again. Like, I'm ready to change directions. And through the whole year before, I had behind the scenes been doing, like, writing these people's talks and giving away all the free speaking information and never even considered that that would be something I would lead with. You know, the story stuff is still very much a part of the work I do. You have to have killer stories in your presentations. But I knew it was a different woman. Yes. I knew the woman coming to me for a story was not the woman ready to take the stage. I knew the woman who was speaking needed to refine that story. And I needed to lead with something different to work with her. Mm. So I went away on a, the reason that the big switch came up, I went on out of town. I'm writing a book right now. Oh, yeah. amazing. And I'll be in, ready in September. <laughs> and oh God, so exciting. it's crazy. So I went away last year is I knew I was wanted to write this book, but I needed some space to do that. So I just went away with a friend who was writing a book too. Let's go book a trip. Let's go away. Let's go write for a few days. And we, had, we went to like a meetup and people kept asking me speaking questions. And here you know, I just answer, well, why not? I don't offer this anyways. Just give away all the information. And and we got back to our room afterwards. I remember being like, if I hear one more person tell me about how much money they've made from having a conversation with me, I'm going to snap. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing something really wrong here. Like, I don't, what's, what's happening? Yeah. And realizing like I wasn't working in the area that I felt most excited about at all. And I was getting so lit up writing these talks behind the scenes, but nobody knew I was doing it. I was so excited talking to these women and helping them with their speaking strategy, but they weren't invested in it like I was because they weren't paying for this. And I wanted the woman who was like, I'm going to go take action, not let's chat about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, so I was like, okay, so team meeting, no more own it Academy. We're going speaking full steam. Ahead. And so how was that for you? Because I know some people are like, Oh fuck. Like I know what I want to do, but I don't know if I will be, I guess you kind of had some proof that you were going to be successful in that um, area, but was there anything that was really scary for you or holding you back or were you just like, nah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it was terrifying. Mm. And I mean, not because, and, and I, and this is what was fun was pulling people later on from the outside looking in. They said it wasn't a big shift because I had always been the speaker. Right. I'd, ever offered that right? right it didn't seem like a big shift to anybody else but to me this was huge right this is a different woman like it's a completely different client now granted a lot of my clients from story grew right into it mm -hmm. perfect came, came back yep. <laughs> but um that's scary when you're looking for a different client now. Am I going to be able to speak to her? Is she going to dig my purple hair? Are we going to be friends? Like, <laughs> how is this going to work? And, and then my, but I knew I had to do it. Like, there was no question. But when my, the other purple hair girl, when Megan told me, she was my CMO. So she's basically my marketing manager. You know, I knew the blueprint. So in December, when we decided we were going to make the switch, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to beta this program. We're going to do a three month mentorship and I am inviting 10 women right now to join me for this. I was like, just decide, you know, I'm just going to do it. Forget it. So we launched all 10 of them said yes. <laughs> and I, so for the first quarter of the, this year, we ran behind the scenes of beta speaking mentorship. And on the outside, everybody, it was, Megan tells me that I need to do 
you know, we're not pushing out any services. We're not push, pushing out any offerings. Like we need to educate your audience on what you're doing now and why like, we needed this period of education, mm -hmm. which I'm just like, my bank account hates you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to trust your process here. So Q1 was really hard. Thankfully, we had the beta program running in the background, which was super helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but understanding that when you're switching gears, you can't just jump up and say, give me all your money. I'm going to be great at this. Trust me. Yes. But I had to have this period of education saying, look, I know my stuff. Like every question you're going to ask, I'm going to have an answer before you ask it. Like, mm -hmm. here you go. What do you need? Search, search the blog. <laughs> and, yeah. And there was a lot of webinars, a lot of work, um, webinar, joint webinars with my past clients so we could educate, but also quietly highlight how much money I had made them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, just, highlight, you know, <laughs> you know, how Danny made 15 K in January from unpaid speaking gigs. Like you being able to say this works, like mm -hmm. you can trust me, like I'm invested in you and I'm not just here to take your money. Like I want you to succeed. Yeah. And so when it was time to roll out the blueprint and do the full launch, like it was cake. It was easy. It wasn't stressful. We just did it and it worked because everybody was waiting for it. They knew it was coming. We put out enough content and it felt great, but it was terrifying to switch gears. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there are so many people watching right now because my own personal clients are in this space too, where what they're doing right now is not working or it's working, but they are so much passionate about something else. And they are literally paralyzed because the leap is so terrifying. They don't think that they can be successful um, doing what it is that they really love. And so I would love to hear just like any advice from you who is somebody who's been through that transition. What advice would you give them? And I also am curious to learn a little bit more about the beta sitch because I think this might be a really great um, thing for some people to try out. So yeah, any advice for somebody who's wants to take the lead but is like, oops, standing over the edge and like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I love that. So it was horrifying. <laughs> it was like really scary. Um, beta testing, everything always makes me feel better, right? Because you getting to see their results instantly and yeah. getting to make the adjustments and you don't have to just wait till everything's perfect and hope that it works. You're getting to figure that out along the way. So that has been huge for me. But two, it wasn't something that I just was like, I'm going to go learn something new and launch this in my business. It was, I know I'm really good at this. I know I am skilled here. I know that I've already invested a shit ton of time and money to perfect this craft. Mm -hmm. I'm not owning it. Yeah. So, you know, if this is something that you're already doing work in. You're probably already doing the work and just not getting paid for it. Yes. It's probably something, and a big shift is usually not even the work, just the messaging. Like, I was still helping people with speaking stuff before. I just wasn't owning that. Mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't encourage enough to beta test and to, to stop talking so much and ask a little bit more. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. Can you say more on that and how you approach these people for the beta testers? Were they all people who were like in your inner circle? Were there some people who you were just watching from afar that you loved? Talk to me a little bit. Well, my light just went super bright about that. <laughs> that is a great question. So in the, once I just, so it was like November-ish when I decided we're going to go in the speaking route. Mm -hmm. Come January 1st, like we're making the shift because my team was coming to stay with me in December. We're doing a team retreat. Wow. I forgot about that. <laughs> we didn't go to Harry Potter World. Oh yeah, we have that offering too. We have Harry Potter World intensives with Megan and yeah, I. I was going to ask about that, but I didn't know if it was like a secret, so I didn't. Oh, I mean, we don't talk about it very much, but we do um, like two day intensives at Harry Potter World <laughs> for marketing and speaking. <laughs> we really don't like rules, obviously. No rules. <laughs> no rules. Just purple hair. <laughs> we, you know, for me, so it was like November when I decided, okay, I know we're going to go this route and I didn't want to wait. This was the driving me crazy. November to January probably just drove me absolutely insane because I was kind of over the story stuff, but I was, the, I still had to facilitate this thing. Yeah. But what I did was I was having a lot of conversations 
with people but before December, I kept having all these like coffee chats and people were asking to talk to me about speaking. I started in conversation talking about what was coming mm -hmm. and how excited I was about it. And that I knew I was going in the speaking direction and they were also, I had a wait list of people who were like, let me know when you make the shift. Like I'm all in. Mm -hmm. So it was really easy for me to turn around and reach out to all of them and be like, Hey, I'm making the shift earlier than planned. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. So, but a lot of times nobody knows what you're doing in your office. Like nobody knows what you're doing behind the scenes. And if you're not telling people what's coming next, you're missing the biggest part of your story because we're so, it's so ingrained in us to tell like where we've been to where we are now, you know, the cliche story of I was homeless on the side of the road and then I took this course and now I have a, I have a billion dollars in my bank account now. <laughs> standing in front of my Ferrari over here. Like that's not the story. You can't stop there. Even if that is a story, like right, right. we can be friends maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, at that point, you don't stop. People need to know what's coming next. Like that's the only way you're going to lead them into it is to, to paint the picture, your bigger vision and what's coming. Mm -hmm. So for me, I started really leaning into what was coming next to get everybody excited about, um, you know, I've always done the speaking thing and we're going to actually switch gears. We're going to start offering education around this and, oh, let me know when you do. Okay. I'm just going to write your name down right yeah. here. <laughs> And it was really, really easy because now I wasn't just surveying cold people. I wasn't just, you know, throwing an ad up and hoping it worked. I had a list of people who already asked for this specific thing. And I literally built the sales page for it around a conversation with someone. I went to dinner with a girl and she just started pouring out all her speaking problems and I asked a lot of questions and I went home and I wrote it and I sent it to her and she's a copywriter and she's actually an amazing copywriter who I heard to do my launch and she, she's like who wrote this this is amazing like was this Courtney Johnson I was like actually it's kind of you me <laughs> 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 it was kind of you you kind of told me all this stuff and then I wrote it down and then but you, you can't just assume what their problems are. You can't assume what they need from you and how they want to receive it. You have to ask, you have to figure out what they've tried that hasn't worked mm -hmm. so you can see how much better it could be. I love that. I love that so much. And so do you do any type of marketing for your programs? That's like a little off the beaten path or like, can you talk to me? I know you're talking about these workshops that probably lead into other things, but what are you doing in the marketing space? Um, that could be like the norm or different. I just am curious to hear a little bit more about that. I do whatever Megan tells me. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, so Megan plans out our marketing stuff like way far in advance. Mm -hmm. And um, we do maybe more than most people, maybe we're pretty, we're pretty boring. I mean, we don't do too much. That's exciting. A lot of education, a lot of content. I basically well, share more because I think that even though you might think it's boring, I think other people like always love to hear the inside scoop. Okay. You got it. So every, Thanks. Megan tells me to write content every week, but I don't always do that. <laughs> and she doesn't like that, but I, I create my content basically we, we know what's coming up. We have a launch that's coming and we backtrack this. What are all the things that you need to learn before this to know it's possible? Mm -hmm. That's my big problem. We, we had to pivot in Q1 because we started putting out speaking stuff. We started with these little workshops and they weren't converting like we needed them to. And we soon realized that a lot of my audience didn't realize what was possible for them. Mm -hmm. There was this block of she can do it, but I can't. Right. So now I needed to create this content that would show them what's possible. And I knew it was a little bit of my own block because I'd been doing this for a long time mm -hmm. and they're thinking, okay, well, Jessica, you, you've been on national media. Like it's different for you. So mm -hmm. that's when I started doing roundup blog posts from other people who were similar to them. Mm -hmm. That's when we did the beta round. I very specifically invited 10 women from 10 different industries so that I would have testimonials that show it works across the board. It would connect with whoever watched it, mm -hmm. whoever read it. No and excuses then, now. <laughs> no, like which, who do you need to talk to? Yeah, exactly. 
And it, honestly, that was huge for me. A few of the people yeah. in the blueprint told me, I've been watching you for a while, but I didn't know you worked with like wedding industry or whatever industry mm -hmm. until I saw this testimonial. So um, I had to start taking it away from me and my own experience and finding people who look like my audience right. to say that it worked for them. So um, I started doing blog post roundups from other people about how speaking has benefited their business, their biggest tips for that, things like that. Um, I started doing a lot of joint venture JV webinars with uh, conference organizers, mm -hmm. clients, again, showing what's possible. How do you do these things? And what else do we do? We do, I try to do a lot of video and live content. Again, um, I'm in, I'm not traditional. Like I'm not white floral flat lays and gold glitter. Like I'm a little tough love sometimes and I can be a little abrasive. I'm not for everyone. Um, but I want to be an ally. Like I want to work alongside of you. I'm very much all up in your business and not everyone's okay with that. So by doing a lot of live content, a lot of video content, it helps me weed out people who aren't a good fit. Yeah. And that's been a big help for me. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's awesome. And so how often are you actually speaking inside of your business now? So I'm, I took a huge step back from speaking about a year ago mm -hmm. because I have a little human and they were moving and we've got Where some- Where is she right now? She's not going to tell us about nanny. This. Yes. this is a, she likes, yes. You get a vagina, you have a vagina. <laughs> That's my kid. Literally, I was on a call with Jessica a few months ago and she came on and she's like, you have a vagina. And I was like, I have. Two. She's like, I have ten. And we're at war with who had more vaginas. So. That was fun. <laughs> That's my kid. <laughs> Love she's, it. She's downstairs with the nanny. But we, you know, I had to realize that I'm very much a big believer in seasons of life and I'm not going to try to power through something just because that's the way it's always been. Things change, things evolve. And I knew this was like a slow down season for me on the speaking side, yeah. make sure that business was really strong because I'm writing a book. I wanted the space to do that. Yeah, it's really casual, like I'm writing a book. Do you want to go a little bit more into that? Maybe? We'll get into that. But like, I needed the like mental space to do that. And I knew that once we put that out, that I would really crank up my speaking. So I needed to make sure like home base, yeah. family life, business life, like everything was really strong before we take that okay. leap. Um, I slowed down on speaking because I wanted to create space in my life to make sure my life and business were really, really, really solid before taking on this big venture of writing the book. And I wanted to have like that mental space to write the book too. Mm -hmm. Also another reason why I only work two days a week. So, um, but right after the accident, I remember being in a Barnes and Noble and looking through all the self-help books, needing an answer. Like I, I wanted someone to tell me what to do next. I needed to know that there was hope that people actually make it out the other side of something like this. Because at that point I didn't know anybody who had, I didn't think it was even possible. And I remember just breaking down and losing it and feeling like if there was no roadmap, then maybe this was the end of my road. Like this was it. This is as far as you get. And my mom came over as I'm losing it in Barnes and Noble on some poor 15 year old kid worked there. And <laughs> I was like, you know, there's nothing here. There's nothing here for me. Like, I don't know what to do. And she just was so calm and said, put something there. And it was like in that moment. Okay. Okay. Like I drew a clear line in the sand that I was going to make it through this no matter what. And if, if it was only to be able to put something on that shelf and to let other people going through those shitty times that there is a way, you know, there is a roadmap. It is possible to come out the other side. And so we're, we're writing that roadmap and it'll so be out in September. Oh, so amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And I'm sure it's going to be such a blessing for so many people. So, ah. Oh. Yay! I love that! Congrats! That's amazing. So, a couple of last things before we wrap up, because I could talk to you, like, literally forever and ask you a zillion questions, <laughs> but I'd love to know, like, for you, what your 
top like success secrets are or what are your non-negotiables inside of your life or your business that really allow you um, to show up as this incredible leader in the industry. So I love that. So a, a new recent change of mine. <laughs> I feel like when it's really easy to get sucked into um, being in all the places, right? And all the Facebook groups and all the platforms and responding to all the notifications. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care <laughs> about any of that. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but that stuff is soul sucking to me. Like, mm -hmm intensely soul set. like the work that I do with my clients is intense like it's a it's not always easy it's very hands-on like and I want to make sure I have the space for them so for me that doesn't mean I can be hanging out in Facebook groups all day that means I have to make sure that I'm creating all the content they need and putting it in the right places and getting their referrals and all the other things on the back end to make sure the business is strong versus going out and hanging in groups so don't be afraid to give yourself a little bit of distance and to have your core, you know, your, your inner circle of biz besties who you can call on and rely on and bounce ideas off of and mastermind, but you don't have to be friends with everyone. And I don't mean that in any kind of catty way, but I don't want you to feel like you have to be everywhere all the time yeah. and responding to everyone because it's going to burn you out. That has been like that. It's been the biggest thing for me, mm, for sure. Less is more. Do less better. Exactly. And, and it's, it can be just the pressure of, well, man, she's, she's doing all of this and she's doing all of that. But like, don't forget about the great work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about the amazing transformation your clients are having. And it's, it's really hard to focus on that good work when you're watching everybody else's. Oh, I love that so much because it's so true. I know so many clients, even myself. I mean, now I like never go on, not that I never go on Facebook, but I block my newsfeed and I don't have like any of those distractions. So I know how easy it can get. Like you can be so excited about something you're working on and you're like, oh, she's doing something similar. Like, is it better? Like, should I be doing it that way? And you go into this whole freaking spin. It's like, no, this is like, not okay. You know, like, I would have never followed that little voice. Like I would have never listened to what people were asking for. I would have never taken the leap if I had been caught up in, let me make it look like her. Like, let me outshine her versus like, what's itching inside of me? You need to have that space to listen. Mm, I love that. Amazing. Anything else for you? Um, that's my, um, freaking hire an amazing team. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't have to do this alone. Like, you don't have to be friends with everybody, but and make sure you're investing in your team. Like, you don't have to do this alone. Leading them from the front, making sure they know what's coming and that you value them. Like, I know your team is huge for you. Yes. <laughs> like, I couldn't do this without them. I don't want to do this without them. Mm -hmm. And, like, knowing that no matter who encounters them and, like, it's, you're getting the same thing you would get from me. And it's an extension. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, delegating was one of the hardest things that I've ever learned how to do, like control freak, perfectionist, do it my own way type of person. I'm so good at everything. Like, it's like, no, 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 no. Like there are people who are way better at their jobs than you are. And it's not your zone of genius. So like, don't even bother. It's like the pleasure, the joy, the fun comes when you're able to really focus on the things that you love doing delegate the rest of people who love actually organizing things or launching things or whatever it is. So doing the marketing. Um, it can be scary to like show people like, you know, not wanting to hire because maybe well, all my stuff behind the scenes isn't perfect. And it's never going to be if you don't no. ask. It's okay to ask for help. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And going along the lines, last question here um of not being perfect is there anything like that you want to share about yourself that you feel like most people don't know or that like maybe you were embarrassed to show people or let them in on but like hey you're a real person like everybody else and i just think that sometimes in this industry we can put people on pedestals and i'm so tired of that like we're all humans and we all have flaws and insecurities and fears and whatever so is there anything that you want to share with us to give us a little bit more of a glimpse into your truth. Yeah, so I'm, you know, pretty upfront with my uh, my failures <laughs> in life, and I'm pretty open about that. But surprisingly, like, I'm pretty private. 
And I think that's the thing that I would, I would love for y'all to understand more of is that we don't, in order to be vulnerable and to be authentic, like it doesn't mean we have to share every little piece. Mm. We just have to share enough. So for me, um, I may not do, I might not share as much as I should be sharing. Um, I tend to like unplug from social media for way longer than I should. And like, just decide I don't want to touch it at all. <laughs> I don't think there's any shoulds around this. Like, I think it's a great thing. More people probably I, uh, unplug. I, I like to like not do anything with it sometimes. Like I get in these modes of, I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, because like this journey, yeah, it's 11 years later for me, but some days real still really suck and it's not always easy. And it's definitely the thing that I don't talk about is that it's still such a guilt trip thing for me and balancing like wanting to be successful for my family, wanting to provide for them, wanting to serve my audience. And then always having that little bit of that little voice in the back. That's like, but you don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. Like who are you to do that if she can't? And so a lot of times I'm just like, you know, maybe today I won't work. <laughs> and that's why it's so important to have this team who has your back and remind you like the good work that you're doing and the difference that you're making and why Jessica, you need to get out of bed and show up and get it done. <laughs> um, but just because, you know, you see the end goal and you see this, you know, 11 years later, able to talk about it doesn't mean that I don't still struggle behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Love that. Yeah. Thank you for that. Because I think people see people who are successful and it's like, oh, it's so easy for them. Like they've made it like great. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to do it yeah. like at all. <laughs> I'm like, maybe my computer will just break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't do that computer. Please don't ever do that. Yeah. Don't send those vibes to the computer. <laughs> No, but I think it's, I think it's so true. So thank you for saying that. Thank you for sharing everything that you have so far. And where can people find you if they do want to learn more about you? So I'm pretty easy to find. You can just go to justcarazzle.com and um, you can come hang out in our Facebook group. It's front and center, but um, yeah, I'm an open book. So any questions you have more content you want to see, shoot it my way. I'm doing now on Tuesdays on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash official Jess Carazzo. Oh, wow. um, it's the one with the blue check. Oh, <laughs> I love it. When people try to make some and be you, it happens. Oh God, that's a whole other story. Whole another story. Oh, <laughs> for another time. What she dude. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> but on Tuesdays now, like I'm doing a live stream to answer your questions that you have around speaking. So don't be afraid to shoot them my way. You can email me directly at Jessica, JessicaRassel.com. And I want to answer all your questions and show you what's possible and let you know, like, this doesn't have to be some scary thing. Yeah, no, I love that. And just from someone who has been witnessing your work and who is in it now, like I was so intimidated by speaking and it's just been so helpful to, I don't know, your approach is just like so, it makes it so easy, um, which is really refreshing because I'm, I just, public speaking like terrifies the Jesus out of me and like, how do you craft a powerful speech and all this stuff and it's just so fascinating and now like I was just at, this is so random, but I was at my sister's graduation um, at Tulane this past weekend and listening to speakers and I was like trying to like pick apart their speeches and I mean some suck and some were like brilliant um so I just like have such an appreciation too now for people who do speak and share their story and we need more people to step up and share what they what they have to offer so thank you for being the shining light and leading the way and making this really approachable for people thank you I'm so excited to have you in it because you have there's, you know, an incredible business and all the amazing things. And I think sometimes it can be really intimidating for us to feel like, but will that translate onto the stage? Like, how do I, how do I represent in the same way? And you're doing amazing. I have to work on my speech now. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best. All right. Well, thank you so much. And sorry for the technical difficulties, peeps. Hopefully we can put them together and make it work, but this has been a pleasure. So everybody have a great rest of your day and thank you so much again, Jess. Thank you. Bye.